we are in Venice. We are not staying in central Venice this time. In fact, we are on the island of Murano. A little bit quieter, a little bit more out of the way, and we are looking forward to seeing what this island is like in the early morning hours and in the evening when the tourists aren't here. So we hope you enjoy the video. Good morning, we're on the island of Murano today. We're trying to seek out a museum or a factory tour, we're not really sure which, but it's something that our tour guide from the other day recommended. Uh, we're definitely hearing some factory type sounds here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you about the chandelier that's behind us which is amazing it is about 13 feet tall and it cost 80,000 euro and took two months of steady production to make to move it somewhere to ship it everything is wrapped individually and professionally reassembled on the other side absolutely incredible the artistry that goes into a piece like this and to see it in person is absolutely amazing our guide that what we're seeing in front of us is a little bit of a dying art. Unfortunately, it takes 10 to 15 years to learn how to be a skilled glass worker. And the young people today are just not cut out for that kind of long learning time that it takes to perfect their craft. So the men that we see here working in front of us really are experts at what they do for their glass work. It's amazing to watch and the glass work they have here is Incredible. These glass artisans have worked together for years. Watching them is like watching a carefully choreographed dance where they anticipate one another's moves and weave in and out of the work area seamlessly. It seems like velvet if you touch. Oh, yeah. But before, it's something like that. Oh. Okay. The only thing that with the sandpaper and water, they scratch the glass up to get uh, this particular kind of texture. You see? No kidding. It could be oh, ceramics, yeah. it could be wood. Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, ceramic. Fabric or whatever. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks like ceramic, this looks like fabric. Yeah, it's fun. I can't believe those are glass. Uh, this is glow in the dark glass. It's a little bit hard to see. Oh, that's so wild. <laughs> Fantastic. We just finished our glass factory tour and there's a reason that they do tours. <laughs> We, we did buy some glasses to bring home. After watching the artists at work, it was impossible not to bring home a memento of our time here. 
Also, I'm glad that they don't ship things the way that they used to. Nowadays, they wrap everything in bubble wrap, so the glasses we bought are all tidy in there and they're bubble wrap, but if this had been in the days before bubble wrap, they would have wrapped up our glasses in seaweed for safe transport, and it would cushion everything and everything would make it to the other end, but it would smell just a little bit. <laughs> so I'm glad that bubble wrap exists. This is definitely something that you need to do if you come to the island of Murano. And we would recommend the glass factory that we went to, though there are plenty of options available to you. The one we went to, everybody that comes here trains for 10 or 15 years. They have three permanent glass makers that are on their staff and they have a number of designers. They used to have more, but unfortunately with COVID, their sales went down. So please come here and support the local artisans. What they do is absolutely unlike the glass that you'll find in the major department stores back home. Definitely worth seeking them out. We're gonna take our purchases back to the hotel. And this afternoon, after we have lunch, we understand that there is a stunning church here on the island of Murano. So we are going to seek that out and see what it looks like and how it compares to the one we saw in Venice the other day. Just another day in Murano. I thought the pigeon was coming for me. <laughs> so as Bill mentioned, we've tried a lot of things that we were familiar with and a lot of things that we weren't familiar with. We like this so much, we came back a second time. You can't have any. Lies. And everything was a hit. There were so many fantastic meals we had. We had some of our best meals here on Murano. And we're going to add down in the description below some of our favorites. So if you come here, you can try them too. church and it dates back to 1100. It's a beautiful church. Uh, the tile work on the floor is stunning and allegedly on the altar there are three or four bones that are from a dragon. They're each about a meter long so three or four feet long. The majority of the tiles date back to the late 1100s, but they were restored in 1973. In 1973, they had severe high waters that affected the church. They lifted all of the tiles out panel by panel, restored them, and replaced them where they originally were. These tiles that we're in front of are of dragons that tells you the importance of the bones that they believe belong to the dragon slain by one of the saints. So as we've mentioned, we've been staying on the island of Murano this week. Last time we were in Venice, we stayed in central Venice, and so now we're able to contrast the two of them a little bit, and they each have something for everyone. If you're looking for a chilled vibe that gets pretty quiet in the evening, then Murano is a great place to relax. If you like nightlife, though, we would recommend staying in central Venice. It does get quite quiet here at night, which again, if you're, that's what you're looking for, totally your vibe, then stay in Murano. Uh, we also find the workaday life here to be really interesting. And it's laundry day. Somebody's skivvies are going to be featured on our channel. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> We've been watching all day barges go by. We saw some TVs get mailed in. We saw a funeral procession go by actually, which of course was on boat, which surprised us, but it shouldn't have. Everything's on a boat. And just all, all the local people going grocery shopping at the two markets that are on the island. Just a really, really fun, relaxed vibe. It's very, very different from Central Venice. Staying in Central Venice certainly has more tourists in it, and there are people who live in Central Venice, but you'll have to work a little bit harder in order to find them. We stayed in the Doso Duro district, and that's where we'd recommend you stay as well. It's a little bit further away from the tourist scene, and you might find that you have some of the lanes all to yourselves. Really, in either place, you can't go wrong. trying to figure out how to put into words why we love Venice so much. And the answer is just everything. 
think about how Venice is built. Now, one of us is an engineer, but that person's not talking right now. What I can tell you about Venice is that it used to be a marsh and they figured out how to build a city on top of it. It is an engineering marvel and I'm not an engineer. It's incredible. Everything here revolves around water. All of the streets are pedestrian, except for the waterways, of course, which have boats. The water always evokes this peaceful, calm feeling. Plus, the people that we meet here are, they're, they're big, not like big, they're the people. The people that live here live big. They live generously. They give of their hearts. And I think maybe the best way to sum up our experience here comes from our history and food tour guide, who at the end of the night said to us, are you a Venetian now? Do you feel Venetian? And I said, well, I, I sort of do because you told me I'm a Venetian. She said, good, because if you weren't Venetian yet, we'd have to go have another drink until you felt like you were a Venetian. In their minds, we are all Venetians because we appreciate their city and we love it just as much as they do. And we hope that we've shared with you a little bit of our passion for the city and we really hope that you make it here someday too.